Hey guys, can you hear me? Okay. All right, so as I mentioned, my name is Mauricio, um, and I wanted to talk to you guys about how a foot in the door is just not enough in the tech industry. Next. Alejandro, next. Oh, too much. All right, but before we get into it, um, just entertain me here and play this game with me, right? Um, Alejandro, could you go next? We're gonna, we're gonna go through five or six tech entrepreneurs and you guys are going to guess who they are, right? Um, you guys can see on the screen, this person um, is the CEO uh, of SpaceX, PayPal, um, and a variety of Tesla, um, and Neuralink. He holds three different nationalities, and can anybody guess him? That's right. Next. This other one, um, born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, raised in Houston, Texas, CEO of Amazon. Richest man in the world. That's right. Um, so we have a woman here. She is a CEO of General Motors. She's actually been working there since she was 18. Her father also worked there. Um, and she is the first CEO uh, of a automobile industry. The company, sorry. Any guesses? Yes. I think this is the last one. Uh, CEO of Apple. Can anybody guess them? Yes, yes. Sorry, I, I didn't hear you guys. Just kidding. We have one more. All right, CEO of Google. Yes. One more, Alejandro. Yes. Okay. What about this person? No, I'm just kidding. So one more thing for me, guys. Close your eyes. I'm going to close mine, too. And if I were to ask you guys, name, or in your head, think of the most technical person that you work with or that you've interacted with in your life, obviously not including yourself. Don't say that person out loud, but just think of that person. Go ahead and open your eyes. Raise your hand if that person looked like us, Latino or Latina. One, two, okay, cool, cool. I want to work wherever you guys are working because I need to meet more people like that. Could you go next, Alejandro? One more. Okay. You know, the reality is even though that percentage is increasing of how many Latinos and Latinas we have in tech, it's still a really low number. We're at 7%. With Latinas, we are at 2%. And um, with the African American community, we are at like seven or eight percent as well. These numbers are very, very low, um, and we need to include a lot of them more in this tech industry, right? But we we don't have to talk about that. I mean, I think everybody understands that. Everybody has touched on it for our presentations here. Um, but what really, really is important is that we've made it, right? All these people that we have in the room are in the tech industry. Whether you work for a corporation, you own a corporation, or you have the idea of starting a corporation, that is awesome, right? So we all have a seat at the table, essentially. Um, the problem with having at the seat, at the seat at the table right now is because we are in this industry, we're constantly grinding, right? We are, if you're a software developer, you're coding, whether you are a project manager, you're doing sprint planning, or you're a tester, you're testing, right? You get into this grind of just working, 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 and it's very exciting, right? Like Selena said, me siento muy excited. It, it feels really good, but what tends to happen is sometimes you forget to look up and check your surroundings, check your environments, right? Instant for me, like, I work at GM. There is actually a good amount of Latinos there. But unfortunately, sometimes I get caught up in my work and I don't look up. There's a, off the top of my head, there's a lot of Latinos I haven't introduced myself to, to them. You know, we need to create these networks. And, you know, this is kind of what habituation means. When you get caught on to this, this uh, grind and you're constantly working and you don't realize the, the new things that are happening, your environments, you're not checking yourself. Um, did you go next? So to end habituation, I kind of recommend two things, right? 
you have to look closer. Once you look closer, like I mentioned, you will be able to raise your head and see all those other Latinos and Latinas that are in your industry that you might not know them. Talk to them, get to know them. We're supposed to know each other, so when there is an opportunity for ourselves, not only can we take it, but also bring someone with us. Besides from looking closer, I also recommend looking broader, right? Trying to see what your company can do to include more Latinos and Latinas in your industry or starting a new ERG. And if there is an ERG, get involved with the ERG. Um, I know that sometimes it can feel like a second job almost, and that's why a lot of people unfortunately don't participate in these ERGs that companies hold. But we really, really need to because that's how we're going to create a network with each other and you know, bring someone with us as we continue to rise. One more. So that's a network. So yes, um, so to summarize, a foot in the door is just simply not enough, right? This, it's, it's great, we are in the 7%, the 8%, the 2%, we are one of those contributors, but we need to help each other out to create a network to increase those numbers. And when there are opportunities, not only do we get those opportunities, but bring someone with us and be able to kind of create this network of Latinos and Latinas and successfully increase the number of people in tech. Um, I know that was really fast, but my name is Mauricio, and if anybody wants to talk about ways that we can improve this inside of companies, I'd love to discuss with you guys.